Hello and welcome to our express service here at Christchurch Chollywood. It's uh, wonderful to worship together uh, God and seek his hope and strength. And um, so it's good to have you with us. I'm going to come to our reading now. Our reading is from uh, Romans 13. Romans 13, verses 1 to 14. Romans 13, verses 1 to 14. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God, an avenger, who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjugation, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For because of this, you also pay taxes. For the authorities are ministers of God attending this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honour to whom honour is owed. Owe no, owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in the word, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbour. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarrelling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray that God will help us as we look at his word together. Oh, loving Lord, we thank and praise you for the wonders of your word. And we thank you for this careful instruction that we have before us here in Romans 13. Lord, help us to heed the exhortation of this passage and help us respond to what your spirit is saying to our hearts. This we ask for the sake of your son, our saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, do keep your Bibles open <clears throat> at uh, Romans 13, verses 1 to 14. Today is our Pledge Sunday, where we're asking the church family to look at their sacrificial giving, particularly their financial sacrificial giving, to evaluate it in re relation to the vision of the church and God's call on us all uh, to support and uh, further his work. Uh, we're continuing our series on our vision, and today we're looking at uh, Romans 13, verses 1 to 14. Our vision's got the acronym GRACE, and um, uh, under the, the words GRACE, we've picked out the letters, growing, relevant, accountable, community-minded, empowering. And today we're looking at the third letter, A, for accountable, accountable. And as I said, we're looking at Romans 13, 1 to 14. Now, what has accountable got to do with being a Christian? Everything, everything. I was in my favorite local supermarket earlier this week, and as I walked uh, to the door after I'd picked up my purchases, I overtook someone who was uh, also kind of heading away from the tills and who'd paid for their shopping and had it in a carrier bag. Um, while they'd been at the tills, they'd quite angrily demanded that bag from the, from the shop assistant, uh, and now 
Having paid for their stuff, they were loitering near a display of packets of Pringles crisps. You know, these big long tubes which have a special chemical in them where if you have one, you have to finish the whole packet. So this guy uh, is loitering near the entrance of the shop with his paid for shopping in his carry bag in one hand and he picks up a packet of Pringles in the other and he starts walking to the door. And I'm at my car by now and I just glance back and he looks up and he catches my eye for a split second and he looks at me and I look at him and then he turned round and he walked back towards the till with the Pringles crisps. Accountability is when we realise that someone else is watching us and when we change direction we stop walking towards destruction. We turn and we walk towards the light. And we need to be accountable because we are sinners and we can sometimes be foolish. And over the last few days, I've thought about that young man, actually mainly about the difficulties a retailer might face in landing a successful prosecution. But when I made myself accountable to this passage, I realised that I hadn't prayed for him, and that me judging him and not praying for him might well be more serious uh, in God's eyes than the crisps he nearly stole. That's accountability. And I'd like to pray for him now. He's somebody's son. Will you join me? Let's, let's pray. Let's pray for that young man. Oh, loving Lord, you know that young man better than we know him, and better than he knows himself. We know nothing of his story or his sorrows, but as a congregation, now we pray for him and we ask that you will reveal to him Christ crucified for his sins and risen for his salvation. Draw him to yourself with cords of loving kindness and make him a man of God for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. It's kind of weird, isn't it? When you sort of pray for someone, they, they, can, seem, they can seem almost like family. Uh, I hope they never catch him. <laughs> Only joking. Accountability. Accountability reminds us that often through the eyes of others, God is watching and he can turn us back from a, a bad path and place us within the community of faith and within the bonds of mutual love and spiritual well-being and respect. What does Paul say here about accountability? Well, first of all, he talks about being accountable to the authorities. Um, uh, Romans 13, verse 1. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore one must be in subjugation, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For because of this you also pay taxes. For the authorities are ministers of God attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them. Taxes to whom taxes are owed. Revenue to whom revenue is owed. Respect to whom respect is owed. Honour to those whom honour is owed. Now he's clearly talking about a general principle, isn't he? It doesn't apply if the government is evil or oppressive. You know, like sort of honour your father and mother, isn't it? If they then tell you to jump off a cliff, you're entitled to say, well, after you. Or perhaps more appropriately, you have the honour of jumping off a cliff first and I will follow when the time is right. The general principle here is unless there is a very good reason justified in Scripture, we are to obey those in authority. And there seem to be two reasons uh, here. First, 
The gospel generally flourishes in an environment in which Christians respect the rules and don't quarrel needlessly. And that's why there's lots of fairly straightforward stuff about the governing authorities and paying taxes and respect and honor. It was that kind of society. And it wouldn't have helped the gospel if the Christian was the only one person in the room who didn't bow when the proconsul walked into the room. And that still holds good. When, for example, a missionary goes to some distant and very different culture, basically they are ask, what are the rules? Who are the figures of authority? And of course, most importantly, what do I pay? So there's a sort of blending in stuff here in this passage. But in the middle of the passage, there's a second part of being accountable to the authorities. And it's a really unusual turn of phrase. Um, and there are some verses in the middle of this section that we're looking at where it gets very dramatic. Now, when the Bible gets dramatic, it's usually to catch our attention for something important. And the dramatic bit begins in verse 3. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. He is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjugation not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. In other words, the legitimate judgment of those in authority in society is an early warning to us all of the judgment of God and our ultimate accountability to him. Now, let's be wary of saying that accountability always applies to someone else. Uh, and, and, um, and we in Christians somehow don't need it. We in, as Christians are just as responsible, if not more, than anyone else for the speed at which we drive our cars, for the things that we click on in our internet searches and how we treat our loved ones. We are accountable to the authorities as an early warning system, a foretaste, of the judgment of God. So that's accountable to the authorities, now accountable to each other. I love that quote from Groucho Marx, these are my principles, and if you don't like them, well, I have others, I have others. What is the unbreakable principle here in terms of our accountability to each other? Verse eight, owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And any other commandment are summed up in this word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. The unbreakable principle is this. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the fundamental reinforcement and completion of the Old Testament Ten Commandments. They still stand, but with greater force than ever before. Our commandment to each other is no longer based on what the Old Testament code says we shouldn't do to each other, like not murdering each other. In Christ, under the new covenant, as well as all those prohibitions, i.e. what we should not do, we have a new duty of care uh, concerning what we should do. We are to love our neighbors as ourselves. And that is enormously pro proactive. To love someone as ourselves is to forgive them as we always manage to forgive ourselves. To plan for their blessing as we plan for our own blessing. To give them the treats, the extras, all the goodies as we always manage to give ourselves the treats, the extras and the goodies. To invest in their future as we invest in our own future. And if we do not go proactive, we are disobeying the command. Now for us as a church, this means we need to give to our parish the knowledge of the love of Jesus Christ that we have been given already, that in effect, we have already given to ourselves. Jesus isn't overly concerned with the needs of the 99 sheep that have been found, but he is very very concerned about the needs of that one lost sheep, whether he pays for his crisps or not. Verse 9, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, accountable to each other. 
The third last bit of accountability is accountable to God. Accountable to God. St. Andrew's Anglican Church in Moscow is a 10-minute walk from the Kremlin. 10 minutes walk or 90 seconds by government car from a frightened man who is ill, lonely, and afraid. He has cut himself off from anyone who might hold him accountable. And his name is Vladimir Putin. He is a warning to the world that we ignore this passage at our peril. The chaplain at St. Andrew's Church, Canon Malcolm Rogers, writes, In my 30 years of ministry, I have never known a time and a place where people are more hungry for God. The person named on the wrong sort of list, the young Russian crushed by what has been done in his name, the mother sick with anxiety for her son who has been sent to Ukraine, he said St. Andrew's Church in Moscow, with its community of Russians and foreigners, is a witness of what the world can be like, of the future kingdom. And I think in terms of our accountability to God, verses 11 to 14, the last bit of our passage, it speaks for itself. Verse 11, besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then let us cast off all the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Let us not walk properly, let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and jealousy, not in quarrelling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. So as I close, maybe we're all in danger of walking out the door with a packet of crisps that we didn't pay for. Let's turn back and let us pay to God what we owe, making ourselves accountable to the authorities, accountable to each other, and most of all, accountable to God in every area of our life, including our financial giving. I've got a feeling that one day when we get to heaven, we're going to bump into somebody, a young man perhaps, holding a packet of crisps in his hand and no one else is going to understand why we're so pleased to see him there. This is what accountability means and this is what this Pledge Sunday is all about. Let us pray. Loving Lord, Help me to show proper accountability to all those in authority over me. Help me to be accountable in my dealings with others, mindful at all times of the command to love my neighbour as myself. Above all, help me be accountable to you in every area of my life, loving Master, Redeemer and Friend, for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, there's a, a pledge form on the website and uh, have a great week. God bless.
Just